Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Manager Certification. We are in chapter five talking about the improving the testing process and continuing ahead with the next tutorial that is 5.5, improving the test process with TPI Next. In order to understand well, how exactly TPI Next can be also an alternative in order to improvise your organization process maturity, TPI basically stands for Test Process Improvement Model. And this TPI Next model defines 16 key characteristics, which basically uh, involves the improvement of the overall test process. Each of this covers a specific aspect of test process, which includes such as test strategy, matrices, test tools, and and the environment. But unlike CMMI, uh, the TPI Next consists of only four maturity levels, that is initial, controlled, efficient, and optimizing. In order to understand that, we would first like to understand that what exactly these models are and what could be the matrix of a TPI Next model would be followed in the organization before you can actually get into the different key areas of the TPI Next. In order to understand the same thing here, the TPI model offers concrete improvement suggestions for each key area on the each maturity level. And basically it consists of only four levels where we talk about the initial, controlled, efficient, and optimizing. Where initial is just usual like TMMI, uh, where we just learned in the previous tutorial that uh, it's just gonna have a you know, ad hoc approach, you don't have anything predefined and you don't have any established process which you can actually make use of as a part of your organization process. But as you keep proceeding, keep modifying your process you know, now and then you move to the next level, which is called as controlled. In other way around, it is also called as doing the right things. That means it just has a process established uh, where you can call it as a process, just unlike your previous stage where you were ad hoc and you didn't have anything well defined. Now you have established process, but there are a lot of rooms for improvement or there are areas which need to be improvised. Similarly, when we move into the next phase called as efficient, doing it the right way <laughs> of course doing the right thing is that's a different thing that you are doing the right thing in your process like you should analyze the things you should create the test cases prepare the test data to support them and create an environment and so on but is that the right way you're doing it so improvisation further happens at the efficient level and investigation of possible overlaps between the different test levels considering the combining of test levels if possible would be taking place here to further improvise it because not every time your unit testing should get completed in order to start with integration as far as some of the units are tested can be pushed to the integration testing and that's where you call it as improvising and shrinking your timeline in order to deliver the best testing ever in that limited time but last but not the least of course we have got optimizing layer which is continuously adapting from the changes or the requirements which you have from the process improvement side. So defining the role of the test and the evaluation coordinator at this point, that means you will have a dedicated person who will be taking care of your process uh, organization and improvisation and to basically coordinate and monitor all the test and evaluation activities. So right now you have got a person who takes care of everything, a dedicated role, and from time to time the process will be, every time you complete a project, the process will be further optimized in order to meet the desired maturity level of the process altogether. On the hand, other hand side, that is right side, you have the TPI next model in terms of the overall matrix. So you have test maturity matrix, which basically includes the key areas, which we are going to talk in short while. Maturity levels, which are the four levels which you just saw on the left side of it, and the checkpoints. At every interval, you have a checkpoint to check that how much you have actually delivered the way you planned for it. Because not every time we deliver or perform an activity the way we planned. So checkpoints can definitely help you to determine if you could deliver the same way what you planned for. But maturity levels are just not alone, has a contribution from the enablers, which are your coordinator or evaluation coordinator. And on the other hand, of course, the improvement suggestions from time to time will keep adding values to the overall maturity process. So putting all together, this is what your TPI next model is. But as I promised you, we're talking about 16 areas. So what exactly is that? 
So before we continue, of course, uh, we have to understand that a specific checkpoints are defined to assess these e key areas at each of the maturity levels. Finding are summarized and visualized by means of maturity matrix, which we just saw with help of the test charter uh, of all the key areas. The definition of improvement objectives and their implementations can be tailored according to the needs and capacity of the testing organization. Now, this generic approach makes TPI Next independent of any software process improvement model because now we have a matrix which basically helps you putting a lot of other elements put together. But the other models generally do not have that approach. So it covers both the test engineering aspects as well as support for managerial decision making. Now, at the end, of course, we are talking about the 16 key areas, what you can have a look here, plus this particular diagram also represents a uh, you know, merger of how you can make use of a combined approach of TPI next with the CMMI. So here, the basically 16 key areas are highlighted on the left. And on the right side, this is being compared to CMMI levels, but we are not talking about combining in our syllabus. So I will definitely ignore this. As far as you are interested to understand, you can have a look on this. We can just concentrate on the left side that what are the 16 key areas which are you know important to be discussed. So we have 16 key areas as defined stakeholder commitment, degree of involvement, test strategy, test organization, communication between them, reporting, test process management, estimation and planning, matrices, defect management, testware management, methodology practice, tester professionalism, uh, test case design, test tools, test environment. So these are the 16 aspects or key areas which TPI Next generally targets in order to improvise a process. And from time to time, we follow that uh, test maturity matrix model in order to assist the TPI Next to keep on practicing the improvement from time to time. So this is what we just wanted to give you the hint and understanding of TPI Next, which would be enough from the point of answering a question during the examination. But this will not be going to the point where you know, can look at the diagram right now that uh, you know whether you can merge TPI with CMMI, if yes, then how would you do that? No, that's not in the syllabus, but this diagram is just for the information that if in case we want to combine something, then how you can actually merge them for different uh, key areas of the, uh, the interest process altogether. Well, that was all we had from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.